we'll get started here as people are coming in. Uh, welcome to our Sierra dealer training. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Garrett, January 21st century. Uh, and we are thrilled to have Tony. And now we have Kimberly here from Sierra um, to break down Sierra's award-winning outdoor displays and mirror TV options. Uh, Tony is the director of residential sales for Sierra. And over the next, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes or so, uh, help us break down the Sierra offering. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so if you or one of your employees, one of your teammates want to review this on our virtual conference center on our website, it will be available for you uh, probably later today or tomorrow. So, again, if there's any questions, feel free to type them into the chat box. We'll get those answered for you. And, uh, Tony, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having us uh, on to do this. and. Um, certainly, you know, want to entertain any conversation as we go through uh, the training deck. So, um, yeah, if we're ready to roll, what I will yeah, do. Yeah, you, you want to share your screen? Yep, I'll share my screen here. So, I'll make sure I got the right thing rolling. So, can you see the PowerPoint? Like it's coming up now. Yes. Yep. So you should say Sierra introduction, right? So, yep. So yeah, want to kind of introduce everyone a little bit to Sierra high level, go through the, the, what, why, and a little bit of the, how to work with us. Sometimes, you know, that can be the most important thing, um, you know, in some current programs. So there's obviously a lot of detail behind things, but Sierra is a company and working with us. So much of it is, you know, understanding the different concepts and opportunities. And again, please, you know, I, I don't want to certainly don't want to just preach uh, at everyone. So uh, do not hesitate to to uh, jump in with questions as needed. Uh, so we are in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Titletown, USA, as I like to call it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's a pretty fun story behind Sierra. So uh, we started in actually a garage. So we are co-founded and, and uh, currently owned by Tim and Gretchen Gilbertson. Um, we're now in a large factory in Green Bay um, that I've had the opportunity to see expand and triple in size just in my tenure. So this is our 20th anniversary. Uh, so it's been a fun ride through that process. And really the evolution of the products, I'll get into that in a little bit, um, but it's it's kind of interesting how that works. So we're the company with the mind of an engineer and the soul of a designer. So everything that we do, everything that you're going to see is going to have an element of design. Uh, there's a great chance you've experienced our products, whether it's lighted mirrors in a hotel, uh, outdoor TVs in a, uh, a, a sports stadium, uh, you name it. Uh, you know, TV mirrors, maybe in a you know, in a hotel suite or a resort. Uh, so, um, you know, back bar of a restaurant, who knows, right? So th the products are around. Uh, it's just can be very subtle, obviously, with what we do from that design aspect. So like I said, technology meet design uh, that is consistent across our portfolio. Uh, the evolution of Sierra products, it actually started in uh, with vanity TV mirrors. So vanishing TV mirrors for bathroom applications, uh, typically smaller TV sizes relative to the overall mirror. And when you turn that TV off, it, it perfectly vanishes. You know, the core reason of why Sierra with that category is honestly the quality of the mirror. I joke sometimes and say our products work best when off. Um, when it comes to the mirrors, the vanishing mirrors, uh, vanishing TV mirrors, that's that's really what that's geared towards. You want a very high quality mirror for those applications, um, but also you know the the performance of the TV when it's on, and the wow factor of that true vanishing. So from there, uh, you know our categories evolve to entertainment TV mirrors. So typically living area applications. Um, you'll find uh, that our competitive advantage with that category comes down to the customization capabilities. Uh, it's it's more than just looking at an area where you know you want a TV, but you want to hide it. We can certainly do that. We've done that forever. Uh, well, 20 years anyway, but, um, but it's about those applications where you know you need mirrors, but you also want to include, you know, a TV and maintain high design. Home gyms, yoga studios, back bars. Um, you know, from there, from the TV mirrors, lighted mirrors were born. 
because folks wanted to incorporate lighting with the TV mirror. It was actually for a, a hotel project that we were working on. And um, due to budget factors, they said, ah, we got to cut this thing. Oh, but what would the cost be if we took the TV out and just kept the lighting? And we're like, well, we're the TV mirror company. Like, you can't do that. But we did it, and lighted mirrors are born. Every bathroom needs lighting. Every bathroom needs a mirror. We know the AV industry's number one growth category is lighting. We are primarily a lighting fixture company. So it's really fun to introduce different degrees of lighted mirror technology. And and uh, just, I mean, that's a necessity on every single project. And then we have Hydra Indoor Waterproof TVs. Um, this is a product that uh, TV mirrors evolved to because folks wanted to put their TV mirrors right in the shower. Like, well, it's a it's a vanity application, but not like a direct like spraying water on it type thing is we need a different solution. Uh, so we have 19 and 27 inch Hydra indoor waterproof TVs. Um, the 27s are getting phased out. Uh, so if you do have any of those on a project, you'd want to order ASAP. Um, but just, you know, a nice high design TV for unique applications. From there, folks love the design of the Hydra. And they said, hey, can you make this bigger and put it outside? So that's where outdoor TVs are born. So we have been producing outdoor TVs since we, we did a initial launch at 2011 Cedia in Indy, and we've been producing and shipping outdoor TVs since 2012. So, um, you know, one of the oldest outdoor TV manufacturers in the industry, uh, it's pretty much, um, you know, Sunbright and Sierra were the main drivers of that. Obviously, we have Samsung now, which is, um, you know, a great company that really validated that category. Um, and I'll get more into the details of kind of why the different TVs per application, because that's getting very flooded. So it's important to understand the why. Um, so, I mean, what this comes down to is SEER provides video solutions throughout the home, inside and outside, where regular TVs can't go. And on top of that, we're providing different degrees of vanity and wardrobe mirror technology, right? Your functional task lighting spaces. So, with the TV mirror a application, and, and frankly, 25 grand plus more is it's just a stepping stone. So you are complementing what you're doing with your, your primary viewing TVs inside, and you're able to provide video throughout the entire home. Uh, it's very similar to audio, for example, right? Or, or lighting or shades, where you're not just selling a set of speakers. I mean, yeah, your two-channel application might, might fit that project, but so often folks want audio and zone audio throughout the entire home. They no, never want to leave that experience. It's tougher to do that with TVs, especially when it's just a standard TV. But with Sierra um, TV mirrors, you have that application. You have that opportunity uh, to bring video to applications where you really, really need high design. You need that vanishing technology. And then again, with lighted mirrors, every bathroom needs lighting. Every bathroom needs a mirror. So. Uh, this is our lookbook. Uh, this is a phenomenal sales tool that uh, is available to, you know, just from a nice visual standpoint, go through those applications and be, be very, um, you know, very, I guess, concise overall when it comes to here's, here are the products uh, with the different experiences throughout the home. So dive in a bit more into lighted mirrors. I'm going to dive into each category a bit. And like I said, you know, please chime in if you have questions. Um, you know, I don't read off slides, so I just kind of have them as a framework. Um, so, again, light of mirrors, every bathroom needs a mirror, every bathroom needs lighting. Uh, this is really a product that it's a category that straight up's commoditized, right? So, why Sierra lighted mirrors comes down to the best quality light source in terms of, you know, high CRI. Um, you've got, um, you know, very, uh, very bright. So the necessary backlighting level is critical. Um, from a mirror quality standpoint, you ever see that black edge corrosion on mirrors? Our mirrors are a copper free backing. So very long lasting, very durable, very high brightness reflection. You know, some of the cheaper mirrors straight up that reflection can be wavy, uh, distorted. So just the mirror itself is extremely high quality. Not all silvered mirrors is, is made the same. Uh, again, the light source uh, with that 90 plus CRI, you know, we even get into like our, our values and, um, you know, when it comes to the ratings, 
And again, the, the key thing here is with the applications these are designed for is that necessary backlighting level as well, which is very hard to come by and very efficient. So, and the big thing with us is our ability to customize at a very efficient uh, value. So you can design a lighted mirror as a one-off up to 94 by 70 for the mirror size. Um, and you're going to find the best value with that, uh, you know, because they are made here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We do have some global source solutions that if you're dealing with large quantity projects, you know, like we obviously a lot of hotels, uh, MDU projects, those types of things, we'll have some of that in stock as well uh, to provide, you know, just the most cost effective solution. Uh, but again, that real value, what you'd see day to day, uh, especially in like a luxury residential application is our ability to design that lighted mirror to fit that space, even as low as quantity one. Very slim, very easy to install. It installs like a standard sconce, you know, at its core. And there are certainly, certainly different degrees of uh, control technology from there. Uh, I don't know if anyone's going to light a Palooza, but we will be launching our Cirrus smart lights there. That will be tunable white RGB lighting that will be controllable. So digital lighting uh, controllable through the control system to really complement what you might be doing through the whole home uh, with that. Uh, what we have right now, if you want to control your, your uh, you know, the color temp of that white light is our touch button option. It's really cool. It's all self-contained. And so you don't need additional wall switches as long as you have power running that mirror. You can control on off dimming. Uh, you can control the color temp and then, you know, even like a third option with some different features. So your options are standard with zero to 10 volt or, or line level dimming. Touch button, which is all self-contained, self-controlled. And then what will be coming down the line are the Sears Smart Lights mirrors. So on to a different mirror application, which would be our vanishing entertainment TV mirrors. So these applications here, I mean, here you see it's a standard with a frame. Um, certainly with this product, I mean, it's just a beautiful product for that space. There's just no technology vis visible, um, very clean, uh, you know, just being cognizant of the lighting. It is a TV mirror. Uh, people ask, why is it reflective? Say that's the mirror portion of the TV mirror. Uh, but again, with, with controlled lighting, these perform phenomenally. And again, you can specify these products up to 94 by 70 for an individual mirror. And you could do multiple mirrors to create an entire mirror wall application, which is very common. Again, that's our true competitive advantage. It's the fact that you say, hey, I have a 200 inch wide by 70 high wall that you know we want to be mirrors. We will work with you to help kind of do that takeoff, section out those mirrors, build that to that application. Um, so we have, sorry, is there a Tony, question? To, yeah, Tony, the, the, the frame options, you said the 100 plus frame options. So I guess that's a, the two part order. You order the, the actual, the, the mirror TV in itself and then the frame, uh, as well. Yep. So if, and, and the frame is not, is not, um, necessary. So a frame is most common probably with a standard TV mirror. Again, where you're trying to hide that primary viewing TV, whether it's for a bedroom or living area application, dining room. Um, you know, typically if you're dealing with a, you know, large mirror wall, for example, or a custom mirror, um, usually they have millwork or some sort of trim, if anything. Uh, so a frame is not necessary, but it's an option uh, to, you know, really make that look like a dedicated mirror. And if, if you want to frame it, but one of our options doesn't do the trick, you know, you can always source a frame in the field as well. So, uh, TV sizes right now, we currently have like immediately, immediately available are 55 and 65s. Uh, in a few months, we will have 43s and 75s back in the mix. Um, so depending on your project time frame, we can always quote those and kind of give you some budgetary budgetary guidelines and initial specs on that. So, um, but yeah, 55, 65 inch TV mirrors, um, you know, all of our mirrors pretty much are made to order, uh, but you know, your lead times, whether it's a lighted mirror to TV mirror, 
typically two to four weeks, depending on the custom project, you know, I'll often communicate six to eight, you know, especially when factoring in design and transit, you know, on each end as well. So it's a fun product. It's, uh, you know, we currently have a promotion going on uh, through this month uh, for uh, up to a thousand off uh, retailing your cost on a 55 inch TV mirror and a 65 inch TV mirror. Uh, it's it's more, most dedicated to standards just because we want people thinking about like, okay, there's there's different options to sort of hide the TV. Uh, one option is, you know, there's Samsung the frame, Sony has their option now, uh, but it's like, hey, don't forget to continue to offer an entertainment TV mirror as an option for that space too, for a few reasons, right? For the customer, I mean, it's it's something that they might find this to be the wow factor. Like this is just what we need to have for, as we're showing here in that, in that flyer, our back bar application, right? And it's going to be the most expensive option probably, but that's not a bad thing either because it really does get, give that sense of pride. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very good revenue and profit for everyone, right? So uh, it's a great solution to offer uh, for those applications. And again, we're helping throw some gasoline on that fire with, with this promo. How about so, installation of the uh, of the sit? Just like any basic TV, I'm sure there's got to be something uh, a little different since you're installing a mirror TV, or is it just same, same way you use a specialty mount that you need to use? So we we include brackets um, in theory, depending on the size of the TV mirror. You know, it's there's a Vesa hole pattern on the back of that you could use a mount, but yeah. It, 99% of the time, it's the brackets that we provide. You could recess the TV into the wall and do a rough opening, or you can do it surface mounted. But either way, we provide the brackets and there's, again, dedicated shop drawings that would be reviewed and approved um, just to make sure that given the fact that we are you know, making these to order that you're measuring thrice so we cut once and you have the opportunity to review those, those installation guidelines. If you need to review that in advance, um, Later on, it's going to you know mention our dealer download center, and that's at sear.com. You can scroll all the way to the bottom, go to dealer download center, and that's where 95 plus percent of what you're going to need is going to live, because it will have the specification diet guidelines, some sample shop drawings, uh, and then certainly you can always reach out out to us for um you know some details. So, but yeah, it's all in one. So like the TV is secured to the back of the mirror. It is removable. So if you needed to service the TV separate from the TV mirror, um, you know, you, that, that can be like swapped. If you need to service the TV though, you know, the, the TV mirror does come off the wall. It's a lift off bracket design. Uh, if you have rear access to it, great. Um, you know, that's pretty solid too, but not as common. So it's like it's a two-step process when you're installing it. Then you're, you're installing it, the TV and then the mirror after the fact. It's not one one piece essentially. It's one piece. Yeah, one full one piece. piece. But you can. But, but if you put to service it. Yeah. Let, let's say there's an the issue part. where that that TV needs to be swapped under warranty, or maybe it's even out of warranty. But um, there might be a chance where you don't need a full new TV mirror assembly that that you would just swap the TV itself. But what we provide is a full solution everything is together um the only thing that is going to be separate would be the brackets you know the gotcha. wall brackets very good and like tony said it does have the visa hole pattern in the back so if you have a um customer that wants like an articulating mount or or even the integrator so they can service the back of it they can still use an articulating mount mount it recessed into the uh, wall and customize it with that as well for service very good yep yeah, that's that's relevant on these current models and and uh yeah this technology continue to uh to evolve so so another uh tv mirror category be our vanishing vanity tv mirrors uh like i said here the the real core reason of why sear behind this category is the quality of the vanishing glass and that's evolved over time uh, it used to be true color and clarity, but, you know, noticeably darker tint, maybe. Um, certainly, depending on the lighting and the colors in the room and in the, the symmetry of any other mirrors, it worked great, right? I mean, we rolled that for years. Um, and then we improved the brightness of the reflection, 
but you might have had a greenish or bluish hue potentially depending on on the color scheme of the space but now like our latest vanishing vanity glass which has been around for a good you know five plus years um is as close to silver and mirror as you'll probably ever get for a true vanishing solution uh, this is a place this is an application where people start and end their day it is critical they have the optimal lighting optimal mirror reflectivity and just the optimal experience with any technology that they're incorporating in that space as well so like the entertainment mirrors um, you can go up to 94 by 70 for a an individual mirror uh, in either, either orientation just depends on the tv sizes uh, the one thing to note too is the tv size does not dictate the mirror type the application dictates the mirror type so if it's a bathroom application, 99% of the time, it's a van vanishing vanity mirror. And you could put a 65, 75 inch TV in that mirror if you wanted to. Uh, typically it's a 19 or 27 inch size for those applications though. Just like with the entertainment TV mirrors, it's the application that dictates that glass type. But if for some reason you wanted the smallest TV possible, you could do that. So. Um, think entertainment mirror is TV first, mirror second. Vanity TV mirrors are mirror first, TV second. You know, yet the TVs are high brightness TVs um, to optimize the performance. The ultimate, when you're really looking at, you know, especially if you're looking at the, you know, the primary bathrooms and saying, hey, let's go big with this project and really introduce to this customer you know, the ultimate and have everything else kind of flow from there would be a lighted vanishing vanity TV mirror. Uh, so the lighting itself is etched. So that's physically there, but it's providing that task lighting. Um, Cause why lighted mirrors as a category so significant is that light is shining on the end user. You really want to minimize your downward lighting. Um, and, and certainly you don't want to shine light from the back. You know, you, you don't, brighten the reflection by shining light on the mirror, you brighten the reflection by shining light on what's being reflected in the mirror. Um, so with a lighted vanishing TV mirror, especially if you're not into lighting too much, you know, it's it's like, well, hey, I'm the AV integrator, so I'm talking about a TV mirror, but we can also incorporate lighting. And, you know, so you're giving, increasing the value of that product in that space. For your customer, you know, they're, you know, just getting the, yeah, again, the, the functionality of the lighting, the wall factor, the vanishing TV, you know, the, the function uh, of, of that TV as well, depending on, you know, what they're watching, you know, when they're getting ready in the morning or winding down at night. And for you, it's it's a really a chance to give you a space to value engineer. So you could remove the TV or remove the lighting, but you still have something in that space. And then the go big opportunity there is now you're asking, hey, what are you doing for lighting and mirrors in the other bathrooms of the home. A lot of times they might say, oh, well, the designer has something spec. They might even say lighted mirrors. But if you drill down them and say, well, who? Because I know a guy, I know a guy that can make this work. Because a lot of times they don't have a good source for quality or customization. And that's where Sierra can really fill that gap. Every bathroom needs, needs a mirror, every bathroom needs a lighting. A light and vanishing TV mirror is, is just the ultimate solution, and then everything flows from there. Tony, how about um, audio for, I mean, I don't know if speakers built in, but a lot of, how do you guys work with third-party control systems if you're going to have an architectural speakers tied into, uh, you know, an amp, uh, ran, ran by control? I don't know what, what have your customers used uh, for that kind of application for audio? Um, I mean, there's built-in speakers, but you don't really want to use those just the way it's designed. Um, I would say usually people are distributing their audio, right. and so it's ran from the source. Um, with that said, there's... So you work with all the control control platforms then, control companies? Yep. Okay. yep. Um, and then there is a built-in 2 by 5 amp in the TV as well for those 19s 27s uh, that you could like directly connect some ceiling speakers speakers if you wanted oh, but, but relative to folks investments with these spaces they you know they're usually bringing in that audio solution into that space uh, from the distributed standpoint so there's no right or wrong way and 
you know, quite honestly, you know, I don't get a lot of feedback on on what happens on the back end, uh, just because. I'm no just news curious. Is there, news. there there are speakers installed in the back of that mirror, right? Is that where? Yeah, for the 1927s, uh, yeah. for those TVs, but it's they're functional, right? If needed, you know, and right. really for like surface mounted applications, right? Yeah, and there's an audio, there's a powered audio out and your speaker output connections as well. So that's normally what the integrators are connecting to, mm -hmm. to get the best sound for the space. Very good. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions on that? And I guess you look at the vanity light mirror. So you have it's the same installation as the, the first one that we saw. And, and this, you have to run, obviously, if they power the the lights and then you then the tv installs uh, as well so it's i mean it's, it's two you're installing the lights and the and the tv itself yeah you're combining the lighted mirror as a sconce which again is going to you know be independently wired like a like a sconce would be and then the tv itself is going to be separate you know right separate power so yep. yep yep yeah and i mean the lighted mirrors are very simple to install there's a housing that goes on the wall and so that is a two piece setup. So there's a ho electrical housing that goes on the wall and then the mirror hangs on that. So it's a lighted TV mirror. That mirror is going to have the TV on it. That's going to hang on that housing. Whereas if it's just a, just a TV mirror without the lighting, then again, it's just the wall brackets and then the TV mirror hangs on that. So. That's real quick. Uh, Mark has a question. Are these smart TVs or dependent on a source device? Currently, we call all of our TVs smart ready, which means they're all dumb TVs. No, I'm teasing, right. but no. So, yeah, there's not built in smart functionality at this time. Uh, we are evolving where, I mean, we're we're just months away from having uh, new generation TVs that will be smart TVs. Um, but this has been a very solid platform for years. And um, yeah, so just note that, you know, in, the, in that immediate future, you would yeah, use a different external smart device, um, but we will be evolving to smart TVs. Any other questions? Okay. And, Not very good. and again, what's that? So with the mirrors, you know, it's such a fun category. It's It's really understanding the concept and looking through the space and saying, Hey, I know what we can do here. I don't necessarily know the details. That's where you you know leverage us to help walk through that as as things get uh, ramped up. And then hydro indoor waterproof TVs. So uh, this is a category that, um, like I said, we're the, the twenty seven is pretty getting close to phased out. Um, we do have some you know plenty nineteens, but it's been a cool product. Uh, makes the TV an appliance in the kitchen. Just like with the bezel options that you can that you can uh, provide, it is a product that requires um, you know a lot of specification planning because it is a two skew product where there's a roughing kit, which is a back box with uh, with a low voltage power cable, and so you need that at the time of framing, and then six months to six years later when the walls are finally getting closed up, um, you know then the the TV would install in that so. And at two to three thousand retail, um, it's it's a really good value product for this. These TVs do not have built-in speakers; they do have the built-in two by five amp. Um, but just based on the application, um, you know, you'd go with like ceiling speakers or something like that for them. So, yeah, so you can't really retro, you can't really retrofit this in to the shower, can you? Yeah, people don't want to cut out their million dollar right. square foot dinosaur right. fossil right. pile. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's. A, that's the thing. It's not really a retrofitable product, um, you know, but it's a cool product when people are thinking about it and planning on it. So, yeah. Like I said, the Hydra indoor waterproof TVs, those evolved to our outdoor TVs. You know, folks are just craving some of them. High design, high functionality. Um, I love this install image. Uh, honestly, it's timeless. Um, you know, how to sell outdoor TVs. I love starting with that, right? Is it's asking the right questions. Ask the customer, you know, there's kind of two sides to it. You, you can say, do you want a TV outside? If you ask them, do you want a TV outside? They are immediately, not everyone, but in, in probably more and more, like folks aren't in this box, but 
they are hearing, do you want to take an indoor TV and stick it outside? Therefore, it has to go in this covered space. You don't spend your time there. You don't value it. So we're now just battling budget, right? The way that I see folks optimize their opportunity with outdoor AV is asking that question of how and where do you spend your time outside? Make that an experiential conversation. How and where do you spend your time outside? And and I've done this. Like I remember walking through it's you know house in um, down in Scottsdale, and walk you know we walked outside the backyard. And this backyard was my dream backyard. It like it was huge. He had a sport court. He had a putting green. He had you know a pool, and he had this little covered cabana kind of in the middle of it all that had an indoor TV there that was dramatically faded just from the heat you know fluctuations and couldn't see it. And I said, you know, I didn't ask him, like, well, why don't you have an outdoor TV? I asked, I said, so where do you spend your time out here? And without hesitation, he says, 90% of the time we're out by the pool. And by that pool, it's a completely exposed area. There's no place to to put any indoor TV. And so I said, well, why, you know, you have a really awesome audio system out here. You know, would you want a TV? You know, but they didn't know they could. But establishing the fact that, okay, this is where they value their space out here is by the pool. And then was able to introduce them to, you know, our full sun outdoor TV where they just didn't know that was possible. So that's why I love this install image because it's like, hey, this, this is something that's a pass fail application. You cannot put an indoor TV there. You can't even put a shade outdoor TV in that space. It needs to be a TV warranted for a direct sun application. So I'll get into the different uh, different opportunities. But when you can really bring that client to the part of that outdoor space where they value their time, they value their resources, now you can go big with outdoor audio, outdoor lighting, maybe outdoor shades, and certainly outdoor video. So our outdoor TVs, we have both TVs for shaded applications and for full sun, direct sun applications. So the why between those two is really comes down to the value for that space. So you don't necessarily need a TV warranted for direct sun if it's any shaded covered structure like we show here. You know, if that TV is getting direct sun, it is not warranted for that application. And that that flows through not just Sierra, but you know, if you're looking at like Samsung Terrace, you know, they're what they call partial sun, but really I think you got to be careful there because it's when you and rightfully so, they did a good job of, of adjusting their marketing documents, you know, saying, no, it needs to be in a shaded covered structure. But it's still a dedicated outdoor TV because of the fact you have high T&I panels, which means it resists heat and humidity fluctuations. You have the necessary components to allow that TV to live and perform outside. So that's where our Shade 2 Outdoor TV is just the best value for those shaded applications. And then with our Full Sun Series Outdoor TV, this is just your four-wheel drive Ferrari for direct sun applications. It's such a fun product. Um, this newest generation, the UB4s, very high quality, um, just based on the manufacturers we work with in terms of the components. Um, this is a 2,000-nit backlighted panel. But what's most significant is... It's a true 2000, like that performance is genuine because it is the only outdoor TV on the market right now, up to 85 with active cooling. And why that's important is because as that sun gets bright and hot on that TV, you need that cooling to be able to maintain that performance. What competitive direct sun TVs do is they actually reduce their backlighting to cool the TV. So as it gets brighter and hotter, the TV actually gets dimmer and, and the performance isn't there. So um, so just we're really proud of how well these perform, um, you know, and, and just the, the durability of these. So uh, I will speak to the fact that durability with outdoor TVs, it's a tricky category, right? Our direct sun TVs, they're warranted for a full two years for a direct sun application. But depending on the application, the condition, like it's, you know, it's still a TV, you know, but again, these are pass fail applications where you need this product to perform. Um, but, you know, it's, it's still a TV. So just kind of setting those expectations is, um, you know, if you're on the beach right on the ocean, that's a little different application than, you know, if you're in, you know, Green Bay, Wisconsin, and it's, 
you know, set up out back by by the Sierra Pond. So size is so, 50, 65, 85. Yeah. What's up? What, what I mean, what just I mean, you don't know exactly, but what is usually the, the lifespan of the full outdoor uh, full sun series? Well, and that's kind of the point there is it's your expectation is expectation is, you know, the lifespan of a standard LED TV. But if I parked my car in the middle of the desert, yeah, or put in cover, you know, yeah. salt water, or, or, yeah, that, yeah. Right? there's so you many know, so, factors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's just one thing, you know, that I advise folks like, you know, you got to set the expectations that, you know, this is in an environment potentially that, that is very harsh. But you're investing in a product that is going to perform in its pass fail. Other products just wouldn't be able to be there at all. You know, people say, well, I'll just put an indoor TV and replace it. It's like you do that, you're not going to see it day one, or it's not going to last more than six months. You know, whereas at least investing in this, uh, you are in expecting it to perform and last relative to what anything else would. But I mean, sometimes, yeah, they'll last years and years and years. But, you can't control Mother Nature. You would know best being from Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, speaking of which, right? So, this is, yeah. you know, backyard of Sierra out by Sierra Pond. Um, doesn't really look like that right now. We've kind of had an interesting heat wave. It's going to get up to like fifty today, fifty-two. Wow. Even, I think. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing shorts. Um, you're lucky I have a shirt on right now. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> I'm inside. We got the AC crank. Don't warm out. Um, but just speaking like to this comparison is, you know, that performance, the quality of that display. Yeah. We're, you know, going to be highest price point relative to the size for this application. But once you hit that price point, I mean, if someone's looking at investing in 20 grand for an outdoor TV, you know, that 25 grand to have significantly better, um, you know, performance, and having that confidence that, hey, like if I'm watching this at high noon and it's nice and bright, I'm getting the best performance TV, right? So uh, it's it's a lot of fun to have this product and, and just some of the testing that we've done. These pictures probably don't do it justice, but uh, you can see just from the backlighting level to the actual um, quality of the screen itself, with that anti-glare that contributes so much to the quality, and then just the the color schemes of it. It's uh, the full sun TV just pops. It's phenomenal. So very high contrast, the full array local dimming. So then we, we jump to the shade application, right? So shaded covered application, um, customer doesn't necessarily value, you know, the the full sun TV, and that's okay, right? That's why these exist, um, you know, to get to the best value for that application. And, and we really are. So like our shade outdoor TV, you know, on paper, there's others that are brighter, but this is a shaded application. And we've been producing outdoor TVs for 12 years. And so we know what that optimal backlighting level is. And so our shade outdoor TV is as bright as our original um, and frankly, even like second, maybe call it third generation, uh, for sure, second generation direct sun outdoor TVs. So they perform optimally relative to the application, uh, you know, and they're they're designed to be an outdoor TV. You know, all of our outdoor TVs, you call them, you know, rainproof, weatherproof. Uh, they're not necessarily waterproof. You don't want to spray a TV outside with a hose. Just the way the seal is designed, uh, it's just, it's not designed for that. Um, the other thing, too, is if you spray an outdoor TV with a hose, keep in mind that hose water is groundwater. Groundwater is hard water. And if that water dries on that screen, you'll get mineralization and you'll wreck the screen. I see it all too often um, that, you know, folks, they don't understand, like, you know, they're weatherproof, they're rainproof, but they're not, like, inherently hose-proof. So, uh, but at least having that confidence that, you can leave it out there. I mean, there's there's covers available to protect it from dust and birds. Um, for a direct sun TV, you know, you might want a cover to help protect it from UV rays as well. But very extreme uh, temperature ranges, uh, and it's really short of an apocalyptic event. You know, it's going to work in any application that you're going to watch it. We show here 55, 65, 75. We had a 75. Now it's just down to 55, 65 uh, with this size. It's just based on how, how they're produced and, and the run on them. So we do have a, a rebate program. This will go through at least April uh, on the Shade 2s. 
Uh, so this will flow through where uh, I basically submit a rebate, uh, $150 on the Shade 255s, uh, already tremendous value, and then $200 on the 65 Shade 2s. So um, just kind of in appreciation of everyone's efforts, um, you know, to discuss and present these to, to your clients. Comparison contrast uh, sheet, this is at the dealer download center as well. It's a really cool tool just because it objectively shows the different specifications of the most common outdoor TVs out there. Um, I really, for me, there's, yeah, there's these three applications with outdoor TVs. Um, I shift it probably a little bit different though than what we're showing here. So what you really see now is commoditized full shade performance full shade and direct sun so it really flows into that commoditized full shade probably your top tv in that is probably like the sunbright veranda um you know they're at price points that are it just starts to dive right and these price points are probably outdated you know maybe it's even lower now but you have a, there's a lot of it, that market's flooded i mean you got peerless has solutions Furion. Uh, bright Titan, I know like Skywars coming out. You got Seal Lock, you got Sunbright. Um, who am I missing? Probably right. So that's where then you get to that performance full shade, which would really include the the Shade Two. So our outdoor TV, the Sears Shade Two, the Samsung Terrace Partial Sun, which again is warranted for the exact same application. Um, you know, it's it's a full shade application. Uh, Sunbright Signature kind of falls in that. Um, I know they they might be more partial sun, but also might be some legacy just kind of direction. But what makes the performance full shade TVs, you know, like the like the Samsung, like the Sierra, is the fact that you have the the appropriate backlighting level. You're not just what makes the kind of the commoditized category. What those are is like typically low grade indoor panels weatherized to some level um you know where it's like for that money like you might as well invest in i hate to say it but if you invested in indoor tv and put it out there you're gonna probably get you know at least that better more optimal performance because of the fact of you know how protected that tv has to be even if it's classified as an outdoor tv for that application but then yeah when you get in that like the samsung terrace partial sun the sear shade 2 they're both warranted for a full shade application but they have backlighting levels that are optimal for that um, they have high t and i panels so the high t and i panel is uh it, it prevents the isotropic blackout so what happens is when a traditional lcd panel when it gets warm is the basically the, the, the pixels, the crystals or whatever, not pixels, but the crystals, um, they kind of like unravel and they cause this blackout. So you'll actually literally have your screen blackout. Whereas again, our, have your, your cell phone too. Your, your iPhone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When it's um, under the heat. Yep, and that's a good example, right? So again, they're they're built to withstand the heat and humidity fluctuations. But then, if you're getting into direct sun, again, that's a pass fail application, you know. And there are different applications out there. Um, so we're 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 the best value in that performance shade with our shade two. Uh, you know, it's it's a lower price point than than the top, um, you know, competition. We are the highest price point with the direct sun. But it's also like dramatic, um, you know, the value there is justified relative to that base investment and then investing, you know, a little bit more for what you're going to get to be the best in terms of performance, uh, in terms of warranty and, um, you know, just the confidence and a TV manufacturer. We've been doing it for years and, you know, we've gone through the generations. We, we know what it's like to live in that category. So 50, 65, 85 full sun outdoor TVs. So big hitters, they uh, they're fun fun to sell, fun to have the clients experience that product with those spaces. Really flexibility in the outdoor design. And it mounts so, too. You could th those are purchased uh, separately because they're outdoor rated uh, mounts. Yep. Right? That you get and you know, what articulating and tilt. You have a few options, right? Yep. Yeah. I'll show those in, in just okay. yeah two slides. And um, so it's it's standard VESA whole patterns, but yeah, we do provide dedicated outdoor mounts just for uh, efficiency and confidence. 
and then sound bars. So the outdoor TVs, they don't have built-in speakers. I mean, reason for that is because typically your outdoor ambient noise is high enough that built-in speakers to a TV just doesn't really cut it. Uh, and so you want higher quality sound. The other thing too is they're optional because you know folks might be using a different type of audio system, uh, but they are awesome. Like good solid eighty watt sound bars. Um, yeah, they're it, that's that's a really really good quality uh, sound bar that can be dedicated for that TV. So so there's two sizes available in those. There's the SSB one and SSB two, and the size you know that you'd specify is just um, dictated by the TV size. So SSB1 for the 5055s, and then the SSB2 for the 65s, 85s. So good sound bars, and then with the mounts, um, yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. So different degrees of mounts. We have like a, a very tight slim mount uh, all the way up to, you know, your, your floor post mounts. Um, so most applications, certainly folks need some little crazy stuff but there are custom mount manufacturers out there that you know that take care of that so so standard tilt full motion articulating you got your slim mount for as tight to the wall as possible it's static and then you've got um yeah pole mounts and post mounts in terms of you know i mean this is drink from a fire hose a little bit and just trying to give kind of that high level of you know here's here are the here's the opportunity with Sierra, um, you know how to work with us and digging into the details. If you go to the website Sierra.com, you scroll all the way to the bottom, go to Dealer Download Center. That, in my opinion, is where the vast majority of what you'll need is going to exist. Again, from you know budgetary, you know there's retail pricings on there. Just from a budgetary standpoint, um, just know if it's uh, obviously 21st century is going to have the outdoor TVs uh, in house. If um, if it's a other than like 85, so if it's but keep it simple. If it's a made to order product, you know if it's a TV mirror, uh, you've you know worked through 21st to get. Um, pricing and make sure that freight is budgeted in there as well because it can be it can be variable depending on the size of the mirror and the quantity. Um, but if you're looking at some spec sheets, uh, you know manuals. I mean, review this stuff before you kind of go into the install and don't assume like at the back end of things, right? So each model can have a little bit different integration set and all that. So. For the most part, we try to keep it pretty consistent, but I recommend, you know, reviewing this. So it's maybe not something that you deal with every day, but um, certainly hope that you get there. What's that? Is this where uh, we can, dealers can uh, upload the rebates as well on this side? Or is, yeah. that, is there another link for that? If you go there, um, the rebate link is there as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it's I, know for, I believe it's there. And if it's not there, it's at the top under four professionals. So so if you go four professionals and then under residential, it's there as well. Okay, so very good. Yep. Yeah, like I said, it's, yeah, yeah, this is where this information lives. And certainly we're here, you know, there's Kimberly and me, uh, our local reps, um, you know, work through 21st. You know, if you guys ever need anything, just reach out to us. Uh, we have a dedicated support team here. We're at, we're here to help. Um, so, you know, some of the folks that we have on our inside team and tech support. So if you need any tech support, uh, you can either kind of submit those uh, requests through the website or give us a call or email tech support at seer.com. Uh, ultimately, we need the serial number of the TV and the, you know, what's going on with it. Pictures usually help and it just helps us. We want to make sure that we're diagnosing the situation and, um, you know, and, and prescribing the right remedy. So um, it, we're, we're not a company that, you know, wants to just keep throwing things at it because we recognize that, you know, sometimes, you know, what's just replacing something doesn't necessarily solve what's going on. So we really like to dive in and making sure that, that uh, you know, we have a good positive experience for you on the front end and the back end. Any questions on any of that content? Very good, Tony. Really appreciate it. Um, Kim, 
Thank you as well. Um, also, keep in mind, we are well stocked with uh, Sierra outdoor displays in all of our uh, 7 locations. Um, definitely utilize the, the rebate. What was it again? Tony It was 150 bucks and 200 bucks, right? For yeah, 150 on the 55 shade TVs and 200 on the 65s. Good. Yeah. So definitely yeah. take advantage of that. Again, this is a uh, recorded. Uh, so if you want to review this information later, a lot of cool, great stuff with the mirrors TVs that I didn't know as well. So uh, some good information there to start, you know, hopefully start utilizing some of this information or quoting out future applications for mirror TVs and outdoor TVs. So um, thank you so much, Tony, for, for this. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having us. I mean, this is just an overview as well. So, you know, if we need to dive further into lighted mirrors or TV mirrors or outdoor TVs, uh, even further, always happy to do that. So, absolutely. Perfect. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Later. Take Bye. care.